we need to partition the numbers below into hundreds, tens, and ones. So we need to remember that in three-digit numbers, like we have here, the first digit tells us how many hundreds we have, then we have our tens digit, and the digit on the end is our ones digit. So first, we have 483. Now this 4 is in our hundreds, so it represents 400. This 8 is in our tens, so it stands for 80, and this 3 in our ones just stands for 3. So when we partition numbers, what we're doing is showing the value of each digit in the number. And we can represent the partition as an addition, because if we add 400, 80, and 3, we will get 483. Also notice that after the 4 in this number, we have two digits, so when we partition, after the 4, we have two zeros. After the 8 in our number, we have one digit, so when we partition, after the 8, we have one zero. So now, let's look at 555. This first 5 is in our hundreds place value, so it represents 500. Then we have 5 in our tens, so that's 50. And then 5 in our ones just stands for 5. So if we add 500 plus 50 plus 5, we get 555. Notice when we partition, we only have one digit in each of our partitioned numbers that is not zero. But now we have 609. So this six in our hundreds represents 600. We know it's in our hundreds because we have two digits after the six. So when we partition, we need two zeros after the six. But now we can see that in our tens place value column, we have a zero, and we don't need to partition zeros. That's because whatever place value it's in, the value of the zero is always zero. Zeros don't have any value in themselves, but zeros are still important because they give other digits the correct place value. So, because we have this zero here, we know that the six stands for 600. If we didn't have this zero, we would have the number 69, but that would be six tens, not six hundreds. So we don't need to partition the zero. We can move on to the nine, and because that's in our ones place value column, it just represents nine. And finally, we have 870. This eight is in our hundreds, so it represents 800. 8 followed by two zeros, because we can see that in our number, after the 8, we have two digits. Then we have a 7 in our tens, so that's 70, and our ones digit is a zero. So again, we don't need to partition our ones digit, because the value of a zero is always zero. This zero is important, because it tells us that the 7 is in our tens, so stands for 70, and the 8 is in our hundreds, so stands for 800. But the 0 doesn't have any value in itself. So let's take a closer look at these numbers. First, we had 483. So we can show that as 4 hundreds, 8 tens, and 3 ones. So what we've shown here is the number 483. But we could also think of what we've shown as being 400 plus 80 plus 3. So that's what we're doing when we partition numbers. We're showing the value of each digit. Then we had 555. So that's 500, so we can show 500 blocks. 5 tenths or 50, so we can show 5 10 blocks, and 5 ones, so we can show 5 1 blocks. That's 555. Then we had 609. 
So this 6 represents 600, so we can show 600 blocks. But this 0 in our tens shows that we have no tens, so we don't need to represent any tens blocks at all. And that's why when we partitioned the number, we didn't need to write anything to show the 0 in our tens. We just needed to show the 9 ones, and that gives us 600 plus 9, or 609. Then our last number was 870. So for 800, we can show 800's blocks. For 7 tens, or 70, we can show 710 blocks. But then we don't need to show any ones, which is why when we partitioned, we didn't need to write anything for the zero. Now, instead of using base 10 blocks, we can represent numbers in a different way. So we can use place value counters. So our first question, we had 483. So what we can do is show 400 counters, because if we have 400 counters, that gives us 400 altogether. Notice we have 100 written on each of these counters. Then for this 8 or 80, we can show 8 10 counters, because if we have 8 tens, we have 80 altogether. And for this 3 in our ones, we can show 3 ones counters. So using place value counters is a different way to represent numbers. And at first, it can be a bit confusing, because even though the counters are all the same size, they represent different amounts. Remember, we need 10 ones just to make 110, and we need 10 tens just to make 100. So we would need 10 of these red counters to make something that's the same value as just one of these yellow counters. And we would need 10 of these yellow counters to make something that's the same value as just one of these green counters. So it can be confusing, but as long as we remember that the green counters represent hundreds, the yellow tens and the red ones, this can be an easier way of representing numbers. So if we wanted to represent 555, we could do that using 5 hundred counters to show 500, 5 ten counters to show 5 tens or 50, and 5 ones. Or with 609, we would need 6 hundred counters to show 600. Then we have a zero in our tens, so we don't need to show any tens counters, but we have a nine in our ones, so we can show nine ones counters. Or for 870, we have an eight in our hundreds, so we can show eight hundreds counters to represent 800. And we have seven in our tens, so we can show seven tens counters, because if we have seven tens, that gives us 70. And then because we have a zero as our ones digit, we don't need to show any ones counters. What we've represented here is 800 plus 70 or 870.